Welcome to chapter three. In this chapter, we're going to be talking about the, the demographic elements of the problem and how we can better understand who's being killed while they're walking and use that to tailor our solutions so that we can be most effective. I think the way we've discussed this problem in the media and in popular culture has been a little bit harmful and it's contributed to the problem that we're seeing right now where year after year we have more deaths and we're, we're not able to really marshal an adequate response. This is an image, I like to use an image of these two folks and because I, I think that there, there's a real stereotype of, and misunderstanding about who's being killed. And I think it goes back to sort of privilege. I think when a lot of people who maybe are a little more privileged, who don't do much walking themselves, you know, who can afford cars, who maybe have positions in the media where they are writing columns about this issue, when they think about you know, who's getting hit and killed while walking. It's this guy here that comes to mind and he's sort of like a young wired millennial and he's crossing the street in a major city crosswalk and maybe he's a little distracted by his phone. And I think that the reason that stereotype persists is because that, again, well, people who are a little bit more privileged and in influential positions in media and government, that's the kind of thing they're encountering anecdotally on their drive to work. The reality is that the kind of people who are getting killed are really much more like this guy here that's sprinting across this wide suburban arterial here. This is in suburban Cleveland. Let's talk a little bit more about what we know about who is being killed, because it really does have a lot to do with systemic inequality. And it, this problem is like a lot. I think we're starting to understand a lot of public health problems have these systemic um, underlying factors that are tied to inequality, racism in our society, this is the same way. Here's a, a nice graph produced by Smart Growth America. They do a really nice report about pedestrian safety every two years called Dangerous by Design, where they analyze a lot of the data. And here um, it's showing racial demographics of those who are killed. So you can see here that black people and indigenous people are at greatly increased risk. Black people are most 50, sometimes, uh, depending on what data you use, sometimes as much as 75% more likely to be killed while walking than white people. And Latino folks are also at increased risk. And then finally, um, Native folks have very high risk. So I'm going to talk a little bit more later in the presentation about why that is. But it's important to keep in mind. Also, other demographics who are a little bit marginalized or, or oppressed a lot of them fall into a category where they're more at risk for this kind of a problem. And I'm not gonna get into a lot of detail about all of them, but one group I did wanna spend a little time talking about is older adults. Your risk to be killed while walking starts to rise when you're as young as 50. And when you're 75 and above, you're much more likely to be killed while walking. Again, the, the data has sort of changed year to year over time, but we know People in the older demographic have always been at increased risk for this problem. Um, and some of the reasons are fairly obvious. Older people may be a little slower moving. It, it's more difficult for them to recover when they're struck. Well, one point I wanna make about this is that this is not a group we've done a very good job planning for. And this is a fast growing demographic in the United States. As far back as 10 years ago, groups like the CDC actually predicted that pedestrian deaths would increase just because of the aging of the American population. So right now in the United States, about one in four people is 65 and older, and that's expected to grow to about one in three over the coming decades. So as American population ages, we become more vulnerable to being hurt and killed this way altogether. And planning needs to shift to be more conscientious about that. Those kind of folks need extra protection on the roads. Also there, um, not surprisingly, is an income component to this. So there's very strong data showing people in low income neighborhoods. This is, again, from Smart Growth America. Um, you know, people who are living in the poorest neighborhoods, the poorest census tracts, are more than twice as likely to be killed while walking as those who live in the wealthiest census tracts. I'm gonna talk more about why that is later in the presentation, but Again, this is something we need to be really more conscious of in planning. So sort of safety amenities are most needed in neighborhoods where people are lower income, where they're more likely to walk and rely on the bus. And instead, 
oftentimes it's the wealthier neighborhoods that have the political clout to secure those kind of investments. So that is a summary of the demographic factors. Again, we'll talk more about that later in the presentation, get into a little more detail, but our next chapter, we're gonna be talking about what are the geographic elements of the problem? Where do we, where are the hot spots and how can that help us zero in on the problem and resolve it? 